a format check is where you're trying to check the format of something. Now, there's lots of ways of doing this. A really simple way is just using is alpha. So I'm going to take an email and we're going to do multiple things with this. So let's say input, enter email. So at a very basic level, let's just check this. It's only built of letters. So this is going to be quite useless later, but we could say while um, email dot is alpha which is a uh, true or false is equal to false. So while that's false, we want to say invalid email and then ask them for email again, invalid email and ask them again. So when we run it, enter email. If I enter letters, it should be fine. So if I press enter, let's show here, show it being fine. So Let's print out co continues. So when I run this, you can see that's fine. If I run it and I use uh, something other than other than just letters, it's saying invalid. Okay, so this is alpha is quite nice for names and things like that. And then if I enter just letters, the co continues. So that's a really nice basic one to check if it's um, just alpha characters. Another one you might want to do is check the at symbol exists. So we could say while um, the at symbol not in email. Remember, you can combine these, but you've got to be careful because is alpha and at will contradict with each other. So I could say while at is not in email. So now if I run it, if I type in just Bob, it says invalid. But if I do Bob at Bob.com, that's OK. So co continues, we could go further. So let's say we wanted to have multiple things. So we want to say, we check it's an out symbol. We might want to check that it ends in .com or .co.uk. So to do that, we'd probably go for something like accepted ends and have a list of acceptable ends. So we'll have .com and um, .co.uk. And then we could have two things. So we could have, um, let's have here, let's have a valid equals false. Then what, what we're going to do is we're going to assume it's false and then ask for it to be true. So while valid is equal to false, We're going to ask them for an email. So we can delete that from up here, actually. We're going to ask them for an email and then we're going to do some checks on that email. So we're going to say if um, the at symbol is in email, then we'll ask another question. So if the at symbol is in email, then we want to check to see if the dot is in email. So if the uh, dot the reason I'm checking is we're going to do an index on it and we could get an error back if not. So I could put this in a try except, but I'm trying to use a range of skills. So if this is an email, so it's got past two checks. We then want to check and pull everything from the uh, email that follows the dot. So the way we do that is slicing. So if I show you, um, we then want to do uh, if... And this is where we need to slice out just the email. So we need to do if um, email square brackets. And this is, if you remember, when you do that slicing, that's the whole email, the email uh, variable here. Because when you have nothing either side of the dot, that's the start and end positions, that'll be the whole thing. So I want it to end wherever it ends. But where it starts, I want this to be the number where the dot is. So to do that, we do email dot index and I know this looks confusing so email dot index will get the position of something and in there we put the dot so if we do email dot index let me pull this so if email square brackets the email dot index of the dot all the way to the end so that will be like dot com or dot co uk if we end with like that so we'd find the position of that and then go all the way to the end so if that becomes dot com then we want to say if that's in um accepted ends then valid 
equals true. So when we run this, so if I enter something that's not meeting that criteria, it will keep asking me. If I do one of the things, if I do bob at bob dot something else, it's still not letting me through. I could have a nicer message and just ask email again, but you get the idea. Um, if I do something that's valid, it co-continues and it breaks because it's passed all of those tests there. Okay, so that's just, just one example. If you want to go further than this with a format check, I'd say look into regular expressions. Um, you can import RE, which is a regular expressions module. Regular expressions will let you do uh, literally anything you want. So it's really good for doing this sort of validation, but I just felt it was probably a little bit too much at this time.